making a quilt without actually any piecing. So we're going to be using um, glue and glue based and then we're going to be using sort of a quilt as you go method to put it all together. I'm Helen Stubbings, I'm the designer behind the Hugs and Kisses brand. We've been around since 2001 and specialising in English paper piecing, applique, hand embroidery, a lot of handwork. But we also have a shop quarter inch in Hobart and we appreciate that um, many people just like a quick, simple project and we have people that come in of all skill levels. So we're going to go through this simple quilt um, that would be achievable for anyone and a great quick gift. You can see the quilt behind me. It's called Chenille Waves and it's based on this ruler that I've developed and designed um, called the Wave Ruler. Okay, so as you can see, this one's been done in all nice, lovely tartans and um, navy blue so great for a man or a child a son um, or anyone that likes blues of course it's a lovely range of flannels that came in last year this technique's particularly suited to flannels and we're using the chenille strips to cover our joins and when washed they fluff up like an old chenille bedspread the chenille strips come in all sorts of colors it's pre-cut bias fabric on a roll like this um, this is the um, a little wider one and then this is the quarter inch and the half inch and we have those in several colors so here you can see this is just a small version of the quilt and this one's got straight edges today we're going to be doing one with the curved edges without doing the straight edges on it so what you'll need are just 10 inch squares so it can be a layer cake um, or a 10 inch charm square pack or you can cut your own 10 inch squares which works great from Fat quarters, if they're Australian size fat quarters, or skinny quarters, which is 10 inches by the width of the fabric. Today I'm using my Basically Hugs flowers range. So these are my own fabric designs with PMB textiles. And they're from the Basically Hugs range, but they've been put out in flannels and they're gorgeous and soft. And there's 24 different fabrics in the line. So I'm making a quilt with 24 blocks. Okay, so it'll just be a small little, a little quilt, a floor quilt for a, a baby or a toddler or a, t a little tiny lap quilt. Of course, you just add more squares and you make your, your quilt as large as you like. So as I said, it's based on this chenille wave ruler. And when you buy your ruler, it also comes with little basic instructions here. Um, and it comes with the protective backing paper still on the back. So you do need to peel that off. We leave that on there so during transit your ruler doesn't get scratched. Um, we're cutting them on this lovely fluorescent green, um, which means the lines, the guidelines, really show up in the light and you can see on all different colour fabrics. Let's take a little bit to get this off. Now while I'm getting this off, if you're watching on YouTube, Feel free to subscribe below or hit that little bell so that you get a notification each time we upload a new video. We've got several uh, mini class videos or just tips and techniques or informational educational videos on the techniques and the products we use with more coming all the time. If you're watching it on Facebook, be sure to follow our page. And if you hit those three little buttons, you can also, three little dots, you can also turn notifications on. So again, you're notified. Okay, so this is how it will come. We'll just remove that paper. And then you can see how clearly those lines show up um, on your fabric with the light shining through them. The lines are um, engraved on the bottom side of the ruler, so they sit on the fabric and you won't have any difference in seam. Okay, 
So the way, it's fairly quick the way we prepare our pieces. Um, I'm using this great rotating cutting mat here. It's a Matilda's own cutting mat. And they're really helpful for this project. So you get your 10 inch squares, as many as you're going to use for the quilt. And depending on how sharp your rotary cutter is or how confident you are, you can layer up two or three at a time. Then you simply place the ruler on top. I've got mine right sides down. Just make sure you've got it the same for every square that you cut, whether it's right sides up or right sides down. And then simply, we're just going to cut along the edge. Spin, holding that ruler, trying not to move it. Spin, spin, and spin. And I just missed the edge here. And then your outside edge should just peel off. Oops, I really need a new blade due to isolation. I don't have one here. Okay, and there's your edges gone. And there's all your pieces cut. Okay, so do that with all of your squares so you've got them all ready to go. Next. I've cut my backing. And my batting to about four inches larger than what I know my finished size is going to be so I've got four blocks by six blocks I'm going to do so that makes 24 um, they started at 10 inches so I just calculated 40 by 60 inches they are going to cut down a little bit plus we overlap them then you can either use a fusible batting if you can find it or if not then we will spray baste our batting so I'm just using um, 505 spray and some poly 8020 poly cotton thin batting here today. So I'm just going to quickly spray. It's just enough to hold it all. So I'll smooth that out. And then you would work your way all the way down the quilt doing that. until you've got that all basted. On the top edge then, we're going to take our cut squares and again, I'm going to add some spray just lightly to my batting. And then one by one, we're going to lay out our squares. Now the top one is going to go in the top corner. Just give yourself about a quarter inch seam allowance on the batting and then sit it onto the spray base that you've got there. If you were using fusel batting you just lay these all out and then you would press it with your iron to fuse them all to your batting. Now on the ruler you will see that we have quarter inch seam allowances here. We also have a half inch trim line and that's for when we trim around the outside edge at the end and then we also have quilting lines. So we have quilting lines, quarter inch seam allowance and a half inch trim line. Okay, so what we need to do is with our second block we need to overlap it by that quarter inch. And you can just use your ruler to make sure that your two blocks are overlapped by a quarter inch as we do each one. I'm just off camera a bit there. Slide across. So I'm sitting my second block on top of my first block and overlapping it by a quarter of an inch. And you can use the guide on your ruler to make sure we've overlapped by the quarter inch. And then I'm just going to work my way, my way across the quilt doing the same quarter inch. You can use your ruler or you can just use your eye but you need to make sure that you've got that definite quarter inch, minimum quarter inch overlap and you keep it as straight as you can. So just mix up your colours. You may 
want to lay them all out first so that you're happy with the layout that they're all mixed up nicely and balanced across the quilt if you've got a multicolor scrappy quilt okay so with the spray basting glue you can just pull it up again until you get that right you need to take a little bit of care here and make sure you're keeping it all straight okay then when we move down to our next row same thing again I'm just going to add a little bit more glue we want to overlap the next row by a quarter inch and you continue that right down the quilt And these lines should follow through. So again, you can get your ruler and the markings on your ruler to help, or you can just use your eye and make sure that they're one consistent line. need enough glue to hold that for me while I'm quilting putting it all together Continue working down. So you can start to see how that's coming together with everything overlapped. Okay, so I'll finish the rest of that later. Now we're going to come back to the next step. Now you can see my edges of this quilt are going to be curved, just like the curves are here. If you wanted straight edges, like the one behind me, you use the lines on the ruler so there's a half line and then there's a quarter line so you use those to cut your blocks apart in half so you have a half for one side and a half the other side and you have your four corners using the lines on the ruler the instructions are in the um, in the pattern as well for that okay so my next step is going to be to take my chenille strip and some Roxanne's basting glue and I'm simply going to um, this is just my big bulk bottle but you might have the ones with the little needles so I'm going to run a line of glue dots along where my overlap is right on the overlap Okay, 
and then with my chenille strip I need it to cover that overlapped seam. Now an alternative to the chenille strip are bias strips. If you've pre-made your bias strips using either a bias maker or a, a sasha tool then you would glue them down in the same way. Okay, had some scissors somewhere. No, off. So now I would put my chenille strips down every single seam that I've glued down. And once that's complete, I'm going to take it to the sewing machine. So let me pop back later once I've done all of that and I will show you the next step. Okay, so I've glued on all of my bias strips, or my chenille strips, and then I've actually just gone over with an iron and heat set that Roxanne's glue so they're nice and firm. So when I take it to the sewing machine now, um, it should all hold together. So we've glue basted the fabric both sides of the batting, or we've used fusible batting, and then we've glued on our chenille strips and we've just heat set that with an iron. I'm going to go to my sewing machine now, and uh, which is not set up here on the camera, so I'll come back in a minute. And I'm going to stitch down the centre of each of my chenille strips just with a blending cotton thread and a straight stitch. And I'm going to make sure I catch both edges of the fabric underneath. Okay. Um, I've just used a narrow chenille strip today because it's all I had home in isolation, but I probably would use a wider one, or as I said, that binding strip. If you don't have the chenille on hand, or you don't want to wait for it to come, then you can make yourself um, a half inch binding, just with a binding tool like this, or a three quarter would give you an even wider allowance. And you can use any of the sasha tools. I made this one with um, Pauline Rogers sasha tool, three quarter inch sasha tool. And if I was putting those over my seams, then I, I'm going to stitch down both sides of the sashing strip instead of just down the center of the chenille strip. But that will give you a, a cleaner finish. It won't give you the chenille finish that we're going to get with what we're doing today. So I'll be back soon once I've quilted. Oh, one more thing. While I'm quilting, while I'm quilting down my sashing strip, also on my ruler, I've got these lines here for quilting. So if you have a hopping foot on your machine or even a walking foot you can do it with, you can line this line up with the row before and then run, if I can come back here, and then the edge of your foot would come along the side here and you just keep moving along as you move it through and you will quilt the two lines down the center of each block in both directions. Okay, and it's got instructions on here. Um, use the dash lines for ruler foot quilting or use the solid lines for marking, marking your quilt lines and hand quilting afterwards. Okay, I'll be back soon once I've got it all stitched down and quilted up. stitching and quilting lines on the quilt. With a walking foot I stitched down the centre of each bit of chenille and then I took my ruler and I placed the um, quilting line on the edge of the chenille tape. I had I used a darning foot so a bouncy free motion quilt and dropped my feed dogs, put my quilting gloves on and then I just fed the machine along the edge of the ruler and then moved across and repeated it in both directions. 
and I'll pop a little, a, a little snippet of video up there so you can see that. But now you can see my quilt is quilted in both directions and all the chenille is stitched down. The next step is to do the edge, the binding. Now you've got a couple of options here. On the ruler, if you've done the curved edge, like I've done, you can use this half inch trim line here to trim the edge of your quilt back to a half an inch from the edge of the fabric and um, and then we'll bring we'll bring the back over from that or you can just traditionally bind it so trim it back to a half an inch or a quarter an inch depending on the width of your binding and then use a traditional binding or in our case we're actually going to use the background fabric as long as I've left enough there so I would just place this on my quilt the dashed line and trim away now if you use the straight edge version of the quilt so you use the half and the corner blocks then you would just trim back a half an inch from the edge and either bind it traditionally or how I'm going to show you in a minute okay I haven't actually left quite enough there So you can see how easy that is to use the ruler once again to trim off your edges. Turn the quilt around. Do our other two edges. my edges trimmed so what I can do now is bring the back over to the front now with the curved I find it a little trickier so you could spend the time to trim back your batting to the edge of the blocks so I'll just do it on this one to show you carefully so you're not cutting the underneath you're not cutting the backing fabric at all you're just cutting the batting back okay I'll do a bit more down here as well just enough to show you I'll just move that into the camera so then I'm going to get my iron And do it on a, a pressing mat rather than on your cutting board but for now I'm just going to show you on this and Roxanne's glue along the edge of your quilt top and then with some steam in your iron you're going to bring the back over 
and just glue it onto the front. Then I'm going to put more Roxanne's glue was nearly empty along the edge and again glue down our chenille strip continue that right around the quilt and then we'll simply stitch in the center of our chenille strip again and catch our binding in place all in one step so it's actually the backing fabric being brought to the front to make the binding. I'll continue and finish that, stitch it down and come back and show you how it looks. And here we are back with our finished quilt. So you can see this lovely soft snuggly little quilt with our nice fuzzy chenille strips on there making it lovely textural and fuzzy but nice and soft flannels here to snuggle in. So I washed this in the washing machine with a towel and then I actually dried it in a dryer with some woolly dry balls because it was um, too wet outside to get it done for you. And um, it came up lovely and soft and textural like this. And there's your finished quilt made in, or well, certainly in a day, um, actually within a few hours. So um, a great technique that you might be able to play with and expand and use many other types of blocks and fabric with. We do have the full kit for the quilt um, pictured below or we can do you a kit in the basically hugs flannels or we can just do you a 10 inch charm square pack in the flannels ready for you to make your own or just use the flannels in a different way. We have various colours in the chenille or you might choose to do the binding instead if you don't like the chenille method but the method works the same. Of course you can also just order the wave ruler which comes with a little instruction booklet on how to use it. So I hope you've enjoyed learning something a little different and perhaps just for a change if you don't like, um, don't want to do any piecing but you've got a nice big table and you'd like to have a go at a glue quilt basically, <clears throat> then the chenille wave quilt might be just something right for you. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to that channel or follow our Facebook page um, because there'll be more little classes coming. Bye for now.